Welcome to Independent Verification. My name is Andrew, and today we're going to be reviewing something a little weird. It doesn't have an official name, it doesn't have an official brand, and it comes from China via AliExpress. This is a modification to turn your Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro's X axis into a linear rail style. On a standard Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro, you have your x-axis moving on these wheels across the 2020 extrusion that's held in place with an eccentric nut on the bottom. There's debate as to whether or not moving to a linear rail system is genuinely beneficial or not compared to the stock setup. However, we're going to be running through how to set up this particular system just because there really isn't any good documentation out there, and I figured I might as well add some. In order for this system to work, you will need to procure yourself an MGN 9H spec linear rail. Anything else simply will not work with this system. The concept is quite simple. Everything that we'll be using is metal. These metal pieces right here that are 90 degrees screw onto the linear rail and then this linear rail will attach to the back end of the 2020 extrusion which will prop it up like this. Next we have the plate. This will maintain nearly stock OEM positioning. This plate is a little different than the stock plate however. On the back you can see we have this extra piece that screws together like such so that it can mount to the MGN 9H rail, like that. With the old carriage taken off of the 2020 extrusion, we can now bolt on our new linear rail system. Now, as you can see, we simply connect it to the back, and they're held in with T-nuts that essentially on the opposite side of this extrusion will go in, lock it in place, and there you have your linear rail. So just as a side note, I found that Due to the nature of T-nuts, it's much easier to just put the brackets that hold the linear rail in place first, and then if you need to move them into position to fit the holes on the linear rail, just loosen them up and wiggle them over into their correct positions. Otherwise, trying to get all three of them on properly with them already connected to the linear rail is rather difficult. All right, so this is what it looks like on the back side of the system when the rails are installed. But you'll notice, due to the spacing of the holes and type of carriage, we won't get the same number of holes used in between everything. And that partly has to do with the fact that the wheels on the side here block the angled piece right here from going any further and that's the situation on both sides now I would have liked to have moved this over one more notch but the back plate for the z-axis gets in the way of that so I have to move it over like this still a linear rail is an extremely sturdy strong solid rigid piece of metal and as long as everything's tightened down properly, I don't think you're going to get any wobble from it. After looking at the bag that everything came in, I've come to realize the top four screws you need to mount this plates onto the carriage, they didn't come with any screws for that. So you will need to supply your own in order to mount the carriage to the rail. After taking a look in my box of M size screws, it appears to be an M3 by 6 which fits pretty nicely in there. Now this is what the carriage is like when it's on the entire system. When we go over to the right, we are stopped by this back plate from going any further, which is important because if you went any further, you would risk sliding the carriage off the rail and then the balls in the carriage would just slide out and it would go everywhere, which does lead me to some concern about going to the other side because 
although we do hit the stopper switch before going completely off the rails, you see that we are pretty, very precarious to that one spot. This is a 300 millimeter rail. I would recommend getting something slightly longer than 300 millimeters to go that direction just to be safe. This is now the system fully integrated and the nice thing about the system is it maintains stock OEM positioning so anything that you've made for your stock Ender 3 should fit on this and work with relative ease and minimal changes to various settings like your Z baby stepping height for instance. So we've got everything set up we're going to just do an auto home and see how all the axes feel. So it seems all right. We're gonna move over to just moving the X axis and gonna max out. Can't go any further. Go to zero. It certainly moves very smoothly. And I'm not using a direct drive. It's just a Bowden setup as you can clearly see. So there's not really all that much weight on my hot end anyway. So I can't imagine that would be enough to flex this piece of metal. That being said, this is not a genuine high wind rail. If you are going to get a linear rail, you seriously want to consider getting a genuine high wind rail. They are expensive, but you're probably going to run into less issues. This particular rail that I got, unfortunately, it was cheap and, you know, I just wanted to see how it worked. But, yes, unfortunately, it does not glide very smoothly. Uh, the machining is a bit rough. The balls inside of the carriage don't move so elegantly. And there is a lot of oil on this that could probably stand to be redone. But that's not part of this product. I bought the rails separately. If I keep this set up, I will be moving to a genuine high wind rail. Still, while I have this set up the way I do, I might as well test it. I've got my Ender 3 Pro printing out something that I've printed literally over a hundred times now, so if there's any weird variations due to the linear rail, I should be able to notice it. This is something that I've designed myself, so I'm intimately familiar with the details of how this is supposed to be made. Now, as far as adjusting anything, my Z-axis offset only changed slightly, not even by more than like two-tenths of a millimeter. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to let this print run its course, and we will come back to it when it is done so I can dare to compare. I'm looking at the layer lines, and they seem to be going down pretty nicely. And I can't really get my camera to focus, because the extruder keeps getting in the way of the focus, and it says no manual focus on this particular camera. But, I'd say I'm pretty pleased with the overall outcome. All right, so the print is now finished. I'd say everything seems to have come out as expected. This is something that has to be dimensionally accurate in order to fit on the components that I connect them to. So we'll see how they uh, compare to all the other ones that I have. I'd say you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between this one and any of the other ones that I've made. This would be one that was not with the linear rail. This would be one made with the linear rail. And these are just the feet that go to something I designed. Overall, I'd say it's definitely doing the job. As to whether or not something like this is definitely an upgrade or not, there's further testing that really needs to be done. Things like printing at high speed 
may yield better results with a linear rail compared to using the little wheels that move on the extrusion. But for your everyday printing, the linear rail, it does what it's supposed to do. But if you're just casually printing, I don't think it's going to make a world of a difference.